Hello my scholars, you are welcome to my school YouTube channel and my name is Frank. In today's video, we are going to be discussing about equilibrium of forces. So relax, do not go anywhere and we'll be right back. Well, welcome back to my school youtube channel like i said earlier in today's video we are going to be discussing about equilibrium of forces so let's quickly run through the objective for today's lesson before we begin the lesson proper so at the end of the video one students should be able to distinguish between resultant and equilibrium forces two explain the concept of equilibrium and distinguish between static and dynamic equilibrium three list the conditions that must be satisfied if an object is to be kept in equilibrium by the action of non-parallel forces. Four, explain what is meant by the moment of a force about a point. Five, take moments of a given forces about any point and show their direction. Six, list the conditions that must be satisfied if a body is to be kept in equilibrium by the action of parallel forces. Let's move to the next slide. 7. Work simple problems on objects kept in equilibrium by a number of forces. 8. Explain what is meant by the center of gravity of a body and identify its position for some regular uniform bodies. 9. Name and identify three types of equilibrium with respect to the stability of a body. And 10. Explain the effect of center of gravity on the stability of a body. So let's begin with the lesson proper. So we are going to be looking at the concept of equilibrium. So a body is said to be in equilibrium when one, the body as a whole, either remains at rest or moves in a straight line with constant speed. Two, the body is either not rotating at all or is rotating at a constant angular velocity. Okay, so the first statement, the body as a whole either remains at rest or moves in a straight line with constant speed implies that if the net forces acting on the body is zero. Okay, what that means is that all the forces acting on the body balance out. Then the second statement, the body is either not rotating at all or is rotating at a constant angular velocity implies that the net torque acting on the body is also zero. So overall, for a body to be in equilibrium, both the net external forces and the net external torque acting on the body must be equal to zero. So equilibrium can be static or dynamic. So equilibrium is said to be static when the body is at rest or the body does not rotate or tilt. Okay, so in that case, we refer to that equilibrium to be static, okay, meaning that the body is at rest and it does not rotate or tilt. Okay, so when we talk about dynamic equilibrium, we are simply saying that the body is moving, okay, with a constant linear velocity or the body is rotating with a constant angular velocity, okay. Apart from the tendency of force to cause a body to accelerate, it can also make a body to rotate or turn about a point. This turning effect is what is referred to as moment. So we refer to moment as the turning effect of forces about a point or as is, e.g. the opening of a door or a bottle top, rotation of wheels or vehicle, etc. are all examples of moment. Okay, so moment of a force, we define it as the, uh, the moment of a force about a point, we define it as the product of the force and the perpendicular distance from the point to the line of action of the force. Okay, take note that the SI unit of moment is Newton meter, okay, and it is a vector quantity. So let's move on to the next slide. So mathematically, from the diagram above, mathematically, okay, moment of a force is equal to F times H, where F stands for force, Y H stands for the perpendicular distance. Okay, so diagram two also shows us moment of an oblique force. Okay, for, for the moment of an oblique force, uh, the moment is not equal to force times height. Okay, because the perpendicular distance H here is not perpendicular to the force. Okay, but the side that is perpendicular to the force is OP. So in that case, we have to apply trig ratio to get the value of OP. 
okay, which is perpendicular to the force. So let's move to the other side so that we can see the formula for calculating the moment of an oblique force. So from figure B above, okay, moment is equal to F times OP. Okay, OP is the side that is perpendicular to the force. Okay, so applying trig ratio, OP becomes H sine theta. Okay, OP becomes H sine theta so that moment is now equal to force times H sine theta. Thus, moment is equal to force times perpendicular distance to the hours of rotation. At times or sometimes, a system of force can cause and can only cause an object to rotate without producing any linear motion. This system of force we refer to as couple. So what do we mean by couple? A couple is a system of two parallel and equal but opposite forces not acting along the same line. The resultant force here is zero, but the resultant moment is not zero. Okay, the figure below illustrates a couple. Okay, the figure below illustrates a couple. And here, H stands for the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the two forces. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. So the turning moment of a couple, the turning moment of a couple is also known as torque. Okay, so take note of that. The turning moment of a couple is also known as torque and it is defined as the product of one of the force and the perpendicular distance between the lines of action of the two force. So some examples of couple can be seen in the action of a corkscrew or turning a water tap on and off it is also measured in just like um, just like moment is also measured in newton meter and it is a vector quantity so the diagram below illustrates a couple so here you can see that two parallel and equal but opposite forces are applied in owning and turning off this stuff so let's move to the next slide so this is a typical illustration of a couple. So the moment of a couple, also known as torque, is equal to F times two arrow. Okay, where the two arrows stand for the distance, okay, between the two forces. But in your calculation, you make use of one of the forces because from our definition, we said it is one of the forces times the perpendicular distance. Okay, so quickly, let's differentiate between equilibrate and resultant force. So what do we mean by equilibrate force? So equilibrate of two or more forces is that single force which will balance all the other forces taken together. Okay, it is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the resultant force. So let's move to the next slide. So what do we mean by resultant force? So the resultant force is that single force which acting alone will have the same effect in magnitude as that and direction as two or more forces acting together. So here are some examples for us to apply some of the things that we've just seen. Okay, so let's begin with example one. A force of 5 Newton acts at a point Y on a rod X, Y, Z as shown in the diagram below. If SY is 2 meter, what is the moment of the force about point S? Now remember that moment of a force is equal to the moment of a force is equal to force times perpendicular distance. So if you look at the distance SY, it is not perpendicular to the force. Okay, so in this case, the moment of the force about X is equal to zero. Okay, so the answer to this question is zero. The moment of the force here is equal to zero because the line of action of this force is in the same direction as point S. So in that case, the moment, in that case, the moment of the force in this question is equal to zero. Why? Because the distance SY is not perpendicular to the moment of the force. Instead, the line of action of the force, okay, is in the same direction in the same part as that of point X. Okay, so the answer to this question is zero. Moving on to example two. Using the diagram below, calculate the moment of the force of 10 Newton about point P. So let's move to the next slide to see the diagram. So we are going to sketch this diagram on the board, okay, to make it uh, easier for us to solve, okay? So this is actually the diagram that was given to us. Here was called P, and here is 12 meter. Here is 30 degree, here is O, and here is Q, right? So this is the side, so we can even complete here to make it a right angle triangle. So this is the side that is perpendicular to the force, 10 Newton, 
right? That is perpendicular to the force, 10 newtons. So we had to look for this side. Okay, so to look for this, I will simply apply our trig ratio. Okay, so in this case, we have hypotenuse and we have hypotenuse and we have adjacent. So in this case, we are going to be making use of tan. Um, of course, sorry, so cos theta is equals to adjacent over hypotenuse, right? And remember that our adjacent is o, OQ, right? So here we're having OQ, OQ over and our height, okay? And our, uh, our hypotenuse is 12 meters, okay? And our theta is equals to 30. So cos 30 will be equals to OQ over 12. So we make OQ the subject of formula by cross multiplying so that OQ, okay, OQ is equals to cos 12 cos 30, right? So this is what we are going to be using to solve this problem. Now remember that moment is equals to force times perpendicular distance, right? But in this case, our distance is equals to 12 cos 30. So we just substitute our values. So our F is 10 Newton then times 12 cos 30. Okay. So this is equals to 10 times 12 then times. Remember that your cos 30 is root 3 all over 2. It's one of those special angles. So 2 here is 1. 2 here is 6. So that we'll be having 60 root 3. And 60 root 3 is approximately equal to 104 Newton meter. Okay, so the moment of the force about point P here is equals to 104 Newton meter. So let's move on to example 3. Calculate the magnitude of the couple M in the figure above. So this is the figure. So remember that for couple, it's almost the same thing like moment. It's still force times perpendicular distance. But in this case, you make use of one of the cause because for couple, we have two forces that are parallel, equal but opposite to one another, as we can see in the diagram. So we simply multiply one of the force, okay, one of the forces times the perpendicular distance. So in this case, the perpendicular distance is 0 0.75 meter and the force is 15 meter. So that couple, okay, so the couple M will now be equal to force times distance also. So in this case, we make use of one of the force, which is 15 times 0 0.75 right so this will be equals to 11.25 newton meter just like just like moment okay couple is also measured or the unit of couple is also newton meter so the couple m in the figure above is simply equals to 11.25 newton meter so this is where we stop the preview for today's video i believe you enjoyed the video but not to worry you can enjoy the complete video by clicking on the link in the description below and this will take you to my school website there you have to subscribe to enjoy the complete video in the complete video we talked more about the principle of moment we also talked about the principle of triangle of forces and how to use them in solving problem okay we also talked about uh, more about the types of equilibrium with respect to stability of a body we listed the condition necessary for a body to be in equilibrium under the action of parallel and non-parallel force and many others i believe you enjoyed this video if yes please do not forget to hit the like button click on the subscribe button and lastly tap on the notification bell to get informed as soon as we release the next video.